What'd we get? I don't know. Got a couple small boxes. We got something from Pegasus Auto Racing Supply. Okay. The classic McMaster car daily delivery. Sick. And these. For Mike. Steve says they're heavy. They're heavy. Where's that from? Oh. What is in here? Exhaust? Oh, that one's for Dimitri. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's for Dimitri. Okay. Oh, this one's for Mike. Wait, where's the label? Made in China. This is from Julian. Our good friend. Alright. Whole bunch of mystery packages. That's it. Deliver this to Dimitri. Steve, why'd you go this way? I don't know why you went this way. This is yours. What I got? Oh, that's for Dimitri. For me? For you. And that's for me. You got that's some package. You got that's three for boxes. Me. That's for me. That's for me too. And that one. That one too. That's for you. You gotta hand it to him. Mike's ready for it. Okay, got it. What is it? I don't know. Open it up. What'd you get? What'd you know. get me? I didn't buy anything. <laughs> it's not your birthday. This is stuff for the Bentley. Yeah. So we're gonna make our own droplets. Sick. That are gonna work properly. So got some of those like oh, ball sockets. Oh, oh, nice. Got those things so we can repair the plastic ones that broke. So we'll have to pull those little uh, sensors off. Yeah. And then I'll sand them down and bolt these on. Oh, So gotcha. they'll have a metal mounting point. And then, uh, yeah, we'll cut these bolts and make them the right length. So that's all stuff for that. This, this can't see yet. Oh, okay. This, this secret stuff here. All okay, right, all big right. box. Big box. Let's just. It's made in China. From our good friend Julia. Um, I have no idea what this is. All right, mystery surprise. You know, sometimes I order stuff. And I forget that I ordered stuff. And I order a lot of stuff. Ah, yes. So that is uh, parts for the oh. vacuum system to make that vacuum pump for the Senate. Sick. All right, sounds good. Doesn't look like anything's broken. It's good. All right. And what'd you get, Dimitri? Oh, oh you got the hookup. Yeah. I'm jealous. That's pretty sick. Prevent the maintenance. There you go. Service. Yep. Something Just that, in time. Uh, the event's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something that Dimitri's learning now is you gotta you gotta yeah. do the maintenance on your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the first? I think the Z4. You ran for like an entire season with only two or three oil changes. And that was like 50 <laughs> attempts, like hard. Motion. Like all he did was drive. It was all yeah. he did. Tires yeah. and he pulled, the, he pulled the air filter off. He was like, yeah, it's down on power. He pulled the air filter off. It was so caked with rubber and dirt and everything. You couldn't even breathe. Close to what you had your uh, vacuum filter a couple of days ago. When I opened it up, it was like so clogged. It was barely sucking. Almost ready. Oh, my God. So that's not you driving. Who's, who's no. driving the car? Uh, right here. Now who's going to clutch in? <laughs> I don't know. Little monkey. Nine year old. Give me a fist bump. How did you like it? It's okay to wait. Just turn, just turn it off. Dude, that's so cool. Wow. Yeah, kids. Wow, dude. How old did he start? Like, how old was he when he first got on the track? Uh, he was nine already at that time. Oh, okay, nine. Yeah, yeah. nine. And he started like at eleven. He was ten. <laughs> Oh, wow. But yeah, all of them drive. Yeah, once we get back to East Coast, I'm gonna take both of these cars to Eaton, and he's gonna drive this one, and I'm gonna drive down. We're gonna make some nice clips. How cool is it when all you get? Everyone gets a car, and you guys all tandem. <laughs> oh, oh my so, god! That'd right be so now, sick. all my kids have their own cars. He has the four door. He has a 330 Ci. Yeah. And my youngest one, we just pulled out of the woods my first car, the Z3. Yeah. And he loves it so much, so we just gotta yes. clean it up a little and go on track and drive. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Trying to set the ride height on the Bentley with the uh, with the links. So we got the factory links here that are not adjustable. Putting yeah, some adjustable yeah. ones in, and uh, basically 
setting them to the length to get the ride height that we want. It had the electronic controller in it before, but that just didn't really work well. A uh, bunch of issues, errors kept popping up, so we're just gonna go with the mechanical stuff, and hopefully that will solve the problem and keep the car at the ride height that we want it. That's good. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. A figure and a half. Oh, it did go down. Oh. Yeah. Well, we can go. Yeah, so we can go lower. Should we go lower? I don't know. That's pretty low to me. Wait. Hold on. Why don't we measure it? We should measure it. Though. Nah. No. Just <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm all right. Oh, that's him. He says dope. Okay, so. Well, let me send him a picture so of the front. We'll let me send him. No, we'll lower the front one. Tim, do you know the uh, price of those like ride adjustment links? Stock? I yeah. don't know. But because uh, we broke the tab off the rear sensors, we found out how much those were. Oh, how much was that? 400 a piece. 400 a piece. 400 a piece. Because you can't just change this little arm. Yeah. It's all like together. You have to buy the whole sensor. Oh my god. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. That's why we ended up fixing it because it was 400 piece and they were one week out. Wow. So, back order. Jesus. Yo. Hello. Are you ready to see your Bentley? It is Wait, now dirt around. nasty low. Dirt nasty. I want to see it. No, yeah. it's not that low. It's low. It's not that low. It's not dirt nasty. <laughs> Maybe it's like um, dusty nasty low. I want what Uncle Raymond says. He calls it gang bang low. Gang bang low. <laughs> uh, this, yeah, I don't know about that, but. All right, go. front first, Mark, front first. Show the wheel first. All right. Get his reaction, yep. Ooh. So there's your front. I like it a lot. Yep. Here's your rear. Perfect. Sick. Looks good. So the question, the big question is how to drive. Well, it's really soft. It'll probably drive better in uh, comfort than in sport, because when it's in sport, you're like fully aired out. What do you mean? Well, this, is, this is sport. This is sport. So in sport, you have the least amount of air in the bags. But we haven't drove it. Wait, does it throw errors? No. No, it won't, because it's, it's good. the linkage, not the ECU. And Mike drove it? Mike hasn't driven it. Mike hasn't drove it yet. Okay. He doesn't like family. Yeah. But it looks really good. It looked that low. I mean, it's not like it's dumb low. No. No, so I'll talk to Mike. We'll take it out later. I think it looks pretty good. Here's the front. Your height to me. yeah. So, yeah, I'll talk to Mike and uh, we'll drive it and let you know how it feels. All right. Sounds good, brother. See ya. All right, so Tim and Steve got the lowering links on the car. They're all set now. The electronics, um, like that aftermarket module, has been removed. So we're gonna test drive this thing. And instead of just going by myself, I'm gonna have everybody pile in here so we can get all the weight in the car and make sure it doesn't have any more suspension errors. So we're gonna jump in right now, put a few miles on this thing, and hopefully it'll be good to go. Dave's coming back really soon, and we wanna make sure this car is ready for him because he loves this thing, so. What do you think Let's go how it looks now that it's lower? I think it looks good. I think that ride height looks really, really sick on this car. I hope it's not too low for Dave. But at the same time, if we do need to raise it now, it's an easy thing. You just mm -hmm. crack the linkage loose, adjust it, 
and uh, it should be good. So, Tim and I discovered that there was a little bit of uh, hidden damage on the fender. Not a big deal. From the tire rubbing on the... Uh... It doesn't look like it was the tire. Somebody rolled it before. Oh, Can really? you feel it? Oh, yeah, it's all ripply, huh? Yeah. They didn't do a good job. No, so the previous owner must have rolled the fender before. And, um, I mean, hmm. yeah, you can feel, like, the paint's cracked on the edge. And, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You can't really see it from the outside. It doesn't ripple here. Like, it, it actually looks fine from the outside, but yep. it's damaged nonetheless. Yeah. Well, I guess when we chop these quarter panels and fenders off it, put the wide body fit on it. Yeah. It won't matter at that point. It won't matter. <laughs> we'll be able to get a better look at it even than that. Oh no, we, I set them. Oh, okay. I just so it didn't know it needs to be driven. Yeah. Calibrated. Yeah. It feels boaty already. It feels well, it is a boat. This <laughs> thing is huge. How many times have you driven this car, Mike? Um, yeah, a few times. Oh, so yeah. you'll know the the difference. If yeah, you're... yeah. No, we, we were uh, using it for a while to. Uh, run and get parts and stuff because Dave was out of town so I was like yeah might as well take the Bentley what a parts car I know it's nice <laughs> thanks Dave <laughs> Every single one, make sure. Oh, you're getting blinded too? Oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Alright, ready? That was pretty smooth. It was actually really smooth. Wow. That was, that was really good. Alright, this bump over here. <laughs> Dude, it's pretty good. That's twice as fast as I would have taken it in my car. <laughs> so, one through ten, what are you giving it? I think uh, it's a for Dave. It's a ten. Mm. For my guess, of? Yeah, I'd give it about a seven. I'd, <laughs> I'd mess with it a little bit, but uh, Dave will be happy with it. That's all that really matters. Is that Dave's happy. All right, that's the clicker. Mark. I think Mark's the only one with the clicker. All of us the peasants have the uh, scan <laughs> cards. <laughs> Pam. Yes. We're here. We are here. Formula Drift, Long Beach. It's been a while. Friday practice. Friday practice. Oh, actually, there's a competition later. Sure. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been here. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's not working as hard. You're working on the same car, <laughs> but same it's not car. your car. Or it's not Mike's car. It's not Mike's car anymore. Mike's still working on it. He's not driving. Yeah. He's still over there. Which 
Oh, other mic. <laughs> <laughs> Something's Actually, happening. We don't have tires, but we got food. Mm. So that's there's good. No tires. Apparently, there's nobody over there to change tires until two o'clock today. It's a bit odd, but uh, so we're gonna put the old tires back on the car. We got four laps left. That there. <laughs> what do you do? You need the jacks in? What are you guys doing? No, he's just gonna check something. Okay, go up. Yeah, I don't know what's happening right now. What are they checking? I don't know. Okay. It's gonna be checked. You're gonna get checked. <laughs> All right, so we've done two practice sessions so far, uh, four laps in each session. And in pro, you're only allowed 12 laps before competition. So we basically got four laps left. We've got uh, one more practice session, but we've got a little bit of time before that practice session. So right now, we've got the car in the air, and uh, ideally, we run through the car whenever possible. Put it up in the air, pull the wheels off, put the jack stands underneath it and just have the guys get under there with wrenches and check everything because well these cars are driven really hard putting a lot of abuse through them and stuff can come loose and it's way better to catch it before it comes really loose and you lose an axle or a wheel or a suspension component so getting underneath the car is just like kind of cheap insurance we're out here spending a lot of money to be out at the track and obviously the cars are very expensive we're on track that's lined with walls so if one part fails, the car's going in the wall most likely pretty hard. So uh, they're just getting that dialed in right now. And um, yeah, we'll put some fuel in the car and we'll be good to go for the next practice session. All right, so practice is just about over. We're done with practice. Um, like I said earlier, in pro, you only have 12 laps to get yourself and the car dialed in. Those laps are used up now and so are the tires. And uh, there's an issue because the tire guys are still not here. So uh, the guys are back there scrambling to try to get somebody else to mount some tires for them right now. Um, competition is about to start and all the tires we have right now are used and burned up. So ideally we'd have two sets in case there's a one more time, but they're just gonna try to get one set mounted. And I guess we'll just keep these uh, used ones as backups. We do have to do it one more time or maybe just run those other ones four laps if we have to. Um, Dimitri's a little stressed out right now. His last couple laps were not as clean as some of the earlier laps. So uh, yeah, right now it's like, this is where the stress comes in. This is where you gotta put on the game face and uh, just get in the car and drive the wheels off. But it's it's that perfection. You gotta push 100%, not 105%. You're gonna go into the wall. 95%, the other guy's gonna push 100 and you're gonna lose. So it's, uh, yeah, it's game time. It's time to go. You missing it being out here today? Um, I mean, I'm here, but I'm not driving. That's true. And that's tough. Just seeing everybody drive. And, uh, I mean, I love this track, too. This is, like, one of my favorite tracks. This and Atlanta are just awesome. Uh, but uh, I am glad to see Dimitri in the car doing pretty well, doing really well, considering it's his first time ever out here on the streets of Long Beach. And the car is obviously an E46, like his other cars that I built him. But this one is different. Like it's got more power, it's uh, got more grip, uh, and it's just faster all around. So he's getting used to it, you know. But uh, yeah, I'd uh, I wouldn't mind if I jumped in the car and you know did a couple laps. I'd, I'd, yeah, be, cool, I'd be cool fun. with that, just for fun. Throw his helmet on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I know a lot of you guys keep asking, like, am I gonna make a return to FD? And the answer is no, I'm not. I did it for 14 years um, in pro. Uh, I won a championship. I basically did everything that I wanted to do when I entered Formula Drift. Um, there's so much that goes on that's not driving. Actually, the driving part is the least, like the least amount of time you spend is actually driving the car. There's so much time prepping the car, traveling to the events, obviously building the car if you have you know that time, and then all of the other stuff that goes on at the events. Like when I would show up in the morning to an event, like today got here at 6.30, went to Will Call, got the hard car, over to the pits, get everything ready for the car. And then when I was driving and I had sponsors, I had all these sponsor obligations as well. So film this video, get these shots, do these posts. And I was a smaller team, so I didn't have like a social media person to take care of that stuff for me. The budget wasn't that big. So trying to just, you know, all of that stuff on my shoulders um, is a lot. And uh, now, 
stepping back out of it, obviously when you're in it, you just keep moving forward. You just keep doing what needs to be done and uh, you just keep grinding away. But it was time for me to leave. Uh, I wasn't really enjoying myself that much anymore. It, uh, the, the fun of the driving wasn't offsetting all of the other stuff that has to happen to make all the sponsors happy and you know everything else. Like when you're on the road and your truck breaks down, well, I'm driving the truck and I gotta fix it and I gotta figure out how to get it home. Um, so yeah, there's there's always, you know, there's a lot of stress. Um, there's always issues, you're always overcoming issues. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. Um, it's good to be out here with Dimitri. The H, man, it's so loud. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just a lot, a lot going on. But now, Dimitri's ready, he's in pro now. He's driving my old car that is really dialed in and he's looking really good out there. Um, so, being able to sit back and, uh, and watch him compete in this car that obviously I spent a ton of time building and then developing over the years to get it where it is now, um, is cool. And uh, I'm enjoying it and, you know, the different side of things. Yeah. Still, uh, I still would like to be out there driving, obviously, but just the driving part. So, if anybody wants to give me like ten million dollars, <laughs> and uh, I'll come back and I'll I'll drive and just you know white gloves, not touch anything. <laughs> I think one thing that people don't necessarily understand about you know FD or even like racing in general is the different scale of teams. Like, it, it's massive. Obviously, you can be like, well, this team has the sponsors, and those teams have those sponsors. But even just like scale of personnel. And like how much support they have. Yeah. Is there an example you can think of of like between smaller teams, larger teams, like certain things that are just not able to be done or large teams can do? Well, so it all comes down to manpower and budget, really. So the more people you have, as long as they're managed correctly, you can accomplish so many more things. So when you're on track and you do a lap, if you have a guy that's doing data, you have a suspension guy, right? You have these people that are basically looking at the data and making changes and helping you dial in the car much faster than if you're just a driver who's also gonna make those changes or telling your crew guys, you know, all right, well, we don't have time now. There's only one of you out here, so uh, we won't change the tires right now. We won't do this, we won't do that. You're kind of compromising the whole time. Um, so bigger teams, more budget, and uh, more practice time, more spares, more spare parts that are ready to go. And a good example of that is the RTR team. Um, James Dean had a huge fire. Basically the entire front half of the car burned to the ground. And in two days, the team completely rebuilt the car. New engine, new wiring harness, new suspension, new brakes, like everything on the front of the car was replaced. Um, and if you were a small team, if that happened to you, you would be crying. You would try to put your car in the trailer if it still rolled. And uh, you'd say, "Well, we got to go back to the shop. It's gonna take us. It's gonna take us a week and a half to rebuild this thing." So, you know, they have everything. They have the engine. They have a transmission. They have multiple transmissions. They have an entire rear suspension with the differential, with brakes, <laughs> with everything already aligned yeah. and ready to go on the car. Whole front suspension corners that have been bolted onto the chassis and the alignment set. So if they crash, they unbolt it and bolt a new one on and they're basically ready to go. All That's these incredible. like quick quick release fittings, dry brakes, all that stuff. So they don't even have to bleed the brakes. So um, yeah, when you have big budgets, basically the sky's the limit. So that's why uh, money and racing is goes hand in hand. So yeah. you know, if you have a, if it's a kid on a skateboard, well, it's just you, right? It's just you and your board. Cars, they're just so different. It really is a team effort to uh, to get yourself on the competitive, to get yourself on the podium and be competitive. So it's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. Yeah. That car is so sick. You see those doors, Mark? Doors on the quick cool. release, on the Zeus fitting. That's what we gotta get on Dimitri's car. Quick no, release doors. There's no second door. What are you talking Gold about? Gold wing doors. <laughs> good. The doors have to go up. Tim, if we got you an FD, what would you want to drive? Um, something ridiculous. What's the most ridiculous thing I could drive? The Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this year in Formula Drift, um, they have thrown qualifying out the window. So there is no more qualifying. So what they did was take the top 24 finishers from the 2023 season and basically say that these guys are seated. They are moving on and uh, they're placed into a bracket. And then the bottom eight, uh, 16 guys um, and the rookies and all that are basically grouped in the 16. They have to do a battle today. So you have to win a battle today to basically get put into 
the bracket for tomorrow to make a top 32 battle. Um, they used to have one more time also, so if the judges couldn't decide who won, you would say one more time, and uh, the drivers would come back, put some fuel, put some tires, and go battle again and try to find a winner. Now, I guess they got rid of that also, uh, or maybe not completely, but they got rid of that for the seating bracket. So today, there will be no one more time, uh, from what I'm understanding. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. Obviously, if a guy makes a big mistake, that's an easy one to judge, but if it's really close, I'm not sure how the judges are gonna differentiate who won and who lost. Uh, so that's gonna be really interesting to see. It's uh, For the spectators, I think it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. They're seeing more wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles, but for the drivers and the teams, I feel like, well, we don't have qualifying. So what's a 100-point run? Well, there is no 100-point run anymore because there's no qualifying. So what are they judging? What do they want from the lead car? What they have said in meetings before was always pretty different than what they actually wanted to see on track. So my philosophy when I was driving was drive how I want to drive and show them what I think they want to see. Because what they're saying in the meeting, and when you watch the guys qualify and whoever's qualifying at the top, usually didn't adhere to what they said in the meeting. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out today. Um, it's a different ball game now. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. What's going on? Well, this car should be finally working, hopefully. Does it have a flame tune or does it not have a flame tune? That, I don't know. We're about to find out. Does the power steering work or does it not work? The power steering is working. It looks light. That's working, that's good. What the does the green running. button do? That turns the power steering on. What's the other button over there on the other side of the steering wheel? Oh, the one's hanging out? Well, there's one, uh, oh, let's see if I can see it from here. This one. Oh, I don't, that, I don't know. Oh, that's for the, uh, the air like lift suspension. Oh. So it's got like things on top of the springs. Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to, I guess, raise the car so you can get through driveways and stuff like that. Does it work? Um, no, I don't think it works. <laughs> no. <All right. laughs> we got all kinds of switches in this car. It's not doing anything. Yeah, it's not doing anything. We're also low on fuel. Oh yeah, it is very low on fuel. Should we put some uh, 100 in here? Um, I mean, it's almost yeah, at a, it's we're, almost at a quarter. We're near a quarter, so I think we're all right for. Uh, we're a little on the left, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah, you're fine. We're good. We're good. So the question is, are they gonna shoot flames? Are they gonna shoot flames? <laughs>
running with the bulls, I was seeing if you could jump out of the way. <laughs> hey, You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Oh, that's for sure. Leave a little tire on it for him. 